I'm Murray Carter. Welcome to Carter Cutlery's High Performance Tips. Today, we're at Defensive Firearms Training in Coarse Gold, California with world-renowned combat handgunning instructor, Rudy Waldinger. Rudy is the owner and CEO of DFT. Now today, we brought with us just a small selection of many popular uh, makes and calibers of handguns, both large and small, and we're gonna talk about these uh, for our viewing audience. Okay, Murray, but before we start, I want to introduce again the four universal firearm safety rules. This is a very high concern of mine. I'm now teaching since many, many years and I never, never had an accident, yeah? And so what I want you to do, I want to review the four universal firearm safety rules. You have it here on the back, actually. Uh, rule number one, treat a firearm always as when it were loaded. Even you know this gun is empty, this gun is loaded. All guns are always loaded, okay? All the time. Rule number two, to never muscle anything what you're not willing to destroy on purpose. What it means when I have my gun out, yeah, and even I know here, for example, this is just a plastic gun. There's no muscle, there's nothing, nothing on this. I will not talk to you and will say, okay, look at this, Murray, what's going on here, and I will muscle you. So be absolutely what I call muscle conscious. Okay. Be always aware of where your muscle is pointed. Okay. Rule number three, Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. What this means is actually very simple. This would be off the trigger, this is off the trigger. But what is the problem? I'm turning around, I'm running away, I stumble maybe, and now your body has a reaction. You snap down, you fire around in the ground, this, uh, the, uh, the ricochet come up and maybe you hit yourself in the face. What I want you to have here is, you have the trigger finger straight here along the frame. Not here, you have it here. Rule number four, uh, be aware what is behind your target and in front of your target. Behind is very, very simple. Uh, maybe remember, your target or your adversary never stands still. He's always moving and the possibility that you miss is very high in a defensive situation. Here in the range is very simple. Those targets are always most likely standing still. Yeah, It's very easy to hit. Uh, what you don't want is here, uh, you will not shoot, for example, when I have a ball ammo in your gun, you will shoot somebody and behind an innocent bystander. You have to maybe move a little bit right or left to get a better angle of the shot. In front of your target, when innocent bystander running in front of your target, you cannot shoot because you never know what's going on. Maybe you have to move it side or you go on your knees down and you have to maybe from uh, below up and you shoot them here in the high upper throat the face area. Yeah? So these are the four universal firearm safety rules. And this is very, very important because you have to uh, understand one thing. I'm not teaching you golf or tennis. When you miss the golf ball, you get it back. When you have a tennis uh, club, you know, and you hit him, you get this ball back. When this bullet is uh, leaving the muscle, there's no chance. And you can't be so sorry as you, you want. You can't bring it back. You don't bring it back. Okay, so I once heard that uh, an overwhelming concern for firearm safety is the hallmark of a true firearms professional. Let's see, Rudy, if I've got those. The first is that all guns are always loaded. Always, yes. And uh, second is muzzle discipline. We don't want to point our muzzle at anything we're not willing to destroy. Yes. Third is trigger finger discipline, always keeping our finger high up on the frame yeah. unless we've made a conscious decision to shoot. to shoot. Yes. And the fourth is we're going to be aware of our backstop and what's in front of the target. Yes. Okay, so we're, now that we've covered those all essential for rules of firearm safety. Let's progress onto the firearms. So we kind of have two, well, we have three divisions of firearms here today, Rudy. We've got some full-size handguns. Yeah. We have some compact handguns, and we've got two handguns here on the table that are particularly useful for low-budget, uh, high round count training. Yes. So let's talk. Let's talk about this. Why don't we start with uh, with uh, some of your firearms here on the table? Yeah. Uh, the first one I want to explain you here is. You smaller the gun is, the more problems you have to master it. Because you shoot the same caliber, uh, like for example, in a, in, in a full-size Glock. Yeah? You shoot maybe a 9mm here in this Glock, and then you shoot a 26 here. Yeah? Yes. And what is the problem here? Is this first is, you're losing the index of these fingers here. Yeah? Less fingers to hold the gun. Exactly. And every time you swap your magazine, maybe many people pitching here always... Pinch their skin. palms, yeah. Yes. yes. The next is, you have the same caliber, so that means the spring here, the recoil spring, it's much, uh, much stronger than on a full-size gun. And especially in weaker shooters or women, uh, when they're out here, they have huge problems 
direct the slide back, yeah? On a smaller, well, on yeah, a smaller on gun, a yeah. smaller, shorter, subcompact gun. Mm -hmm. The next problem is, every time you want load and unload, you want always chamber check. And big shooters have huge problems with small guns uh, to chamber check the area, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, here again, but what is the advantage and disadvantage again? Full-size gun, longer side radius, full-size grip, good grip on the gun. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage on a full-size gun is, you it's much more difficult to hide when you carry the gun for yes, 24 yes. hours a day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you have to make a little bit of compromise. Mm -hmm. And there it's coming up, for example. And here again, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, we want to, right away, because of safety, uh, we want to explain every gun was checked from Murray and from me. There's no round, no magazine, nothing in these guns. Yeah? And, and, the, and these are all inert cartridges, which we're going to be talking about later. Yes. They, they have no gunpowder and no primer in Absolutely, them. Absolutely, yep. yes. They're just made for this thing. You know, Rudy, I was thinking of two other advantages. In the case of the, uh, the full-size gun, yeah. you, you also have a little extra weight for recoil control. And, and not to mention the advantage of a higher magazine capacity. Absolutely, yes. yeah. yeah. Good. And then you have, this is the subcompact. Mm -hmm. What they have here is, can you see, is a very short little gun. You have the full-size gun. This is a very large, mm -hmm. large frame gun. And then you have more or less what we call the compact guns. This is more, what I would recommend. This is the best option actually to carry for many people. The grip is a little bit shorter, but you still have a very good uh, grip uh, rip around that you get all four fingers on this. You have a longer side radius and the slide is still mm -hmm very easy to move back and forth. So for, so, so for most first time handgun buyers, something in this midsize is probably going to be the best option. Not to mention, if they are a new shooter, probably they're going to want something in a slightly, uh, you know, e equally potent, but slightly less recoiling round like a nine millimeter. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, so here again, uh, because you see here also, we have here revolvers, we have semi-automatics. What you have to understand is, a pistol, a semi-automatic pistol is easier to master. Easier to master. Must easier to master. Because of what are you doing, for example, on a semi-automatic pistol? What you do here is, you have the safety on, yeah? All you do here is actually, you take the safety off here on this 1911 version, you press the trigger, the sear goes down, the hammer falls forwards, and the gun is doing everything, yeah? Yes. On a revolver, uh, when you take a revolver in your hand, here again, gun is empty. Yep, yeah. very empty. Uh, all you do is actually you run the gun with your trigger finger. Mm -hmm. So you have to hold the gun correctly, you press the trigger back, you move the hammer back, you turn the cylinder, you engage the cylinder stop, and you have to keep the revolver on target too. All at the same time. There's a lot, a lot of stuff. Now, when in a, a situation where I have to reload, an emergency reload or combat reload. And you're gonna have to do that faster because you're looking at six rounds versus eight or nine, or in some cases, 15 or even 20. Absolutely, and here you have to line them up somehow to get them in there. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, on a pistol, you have here, uh, especially on the Glocks, you have a big hole. Yeah, you put this magazine in, zack, uh, pull this back, and you're ready to rock and roll again. Yeah? Yes. What you don't have on a, on a revolver. A revolver uh, is maybe a little bit an uh, advantage. Uh, you cannot have really malfunctions on a revolver. No malfunctions, yep. Yeah, when a revolver is not working, then actually you have a jammed weapon. So that means the difference between jam and malfunction is very simple. A malfunction you can fix very fast, reflexively in the middle of a gunfight. A jammed weapon is pretty much a broken weapon, but you cannot fix in the middle of a gunfight. Why? Because you need a long time to fix the problem. You need, you need maybe tools to fix the problem, or you have to send it back to a competent gunsmith. So that, that brings us back again to the same point, and that is, uh, you know, if you're just the type of uh, shooter who, you know, likes shooting but doesn't have, you know, an hour or two to dedicate per week for diligent practice with a handgun, a revolver probably isn't going to be your best choice. You're probably going to look at one of the compact, you know, 9mm autoloading handguns in a, in a reputable brand. Yes, absolutely. Uh, here again, here I have actually what I explain all my students. I have a very simple three-point rule when you choose your handgun. The first is you want a handgun, what is 100% reliable. 100% reliable, yeah. Every ammunition. Uh, rule number two, you want a very simple to operate. You don't want to have safety and decocking lever, what you can forget in the middle of a gunfight. When you're in a high stress situation, 
And rule number three is you want a gun which one is the hand. So that means you don't want any share sharp edges on the gun because so, you have a malfunction, you have to rack mm -hmm. it, lock it back. You see people with the very high performance, you know, nine millimeter, this is very sharp here, all mm -hmm. the stuff. Mm -hmm. You see, I see my students all the time with bloody hands here yeah. under stress when they fix problems. So the term you used is dehorned. Dehorned, yeah. You, you want you want your handgun dehorned. Dehorned, yeah. And a lot of the finer makers uh, their handguns already come dehorned. Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah, great. Yeah. So, so that brings us to the question, well, why why would you shoot a revolver? I could tell you why. First of you know, besides the fact that they're reliable, they're just fun and they're cool to shoot. I, I love revolver. Yeah. This and, is my big passion. And if you get efficient, proficient in a revolver, you can shoot some really powerful handgun cartridges as well. Absolutely, and you get pretty, pretty fast. I mean, uh, my big passion is actually revolver shooting. And I'm very, very fast with a revolver that people cannot say, how did you do this? Then very often they don't see this, you know, and yes. I'm pretty much, especially now with this new system, and when I have full moon clips, this is very, very fast. And you have almost the same speed like a semi-automatic, mm -hmm. but it needs a ton, a ton of practice, That's yeah. Okay. There's one other uh, type of handgun here, two different types we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the super subcompact guns. Now, where you know where would there be a place in a person's uh, arsenal for for a small gun like this? this? Is the Car P380 and shoots a 380 auto cartridge. I mean, the place for this handgun, I would say actually, is this is a gun what you can carry 24 hours a day. You can even put in your underwear if you need to. You know, when at home, yeah. Uh, uh, the issue here is also, for example, here it gets very, very hot. Uh, people won't have only you no know, thin shirts, you know, e thin shirts. everything very short. They have no place uh, to carry a holster. So you can put this inside the pocket and you have a gun always with you. And here again, uh, what you have to understand, the best gun is what you have always on you. It doesn't help. Now, I shoot only 45 full-size guns, okay, and you're there in the underwear. Uh, where, where you have your 40, no, right now I have my car in my underwear, you know, uh, but this, uh, this is a very good option for self-defense. Uh, what you have to understand is, with this little gun, when you carry this here in a pocket, you have not the same speed, like when I have the outside, uh, so outside range set up. You will not get a presentation or a draw. No, it takes a long time. It takes a long time to, to get that out of your out, pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have to stretch a little bit. You have to be mental aware. You have to see it coming. You can be the best martial artist or the best gunfighter in the world. When you always stand like this and you never look around you and the guy sneaks up behind you with a hammer, hits you on the head, he kills you. Yeah, you've been taken so by surprise. Absolutely. And this yeah. is this what you don't want. I think that was uh, General uh, Jeff Cooper's uh, system, uh, the color code of awareness. Absolutely. We got the white, yellow, which is always kind of being kind of aware of your surroundings, orange when you're triggered to something that looks a little suspicious, and then red, whereas you feel you're probably going to have to fight for you your life. You have to fight, yeah. yes. And yeah. then here again, what is the biggest issue then is you have to develop the combat or defensive mindset. Yeah, and, and that's something that uh, just buying the hardware won't get you. What you really Absolutely need for that not. is to pay good money and go to a reputable school like Rudy's where he'll teach you not only the theory behind awareness, but he'll ingrain it in you through the training. Yes. Something else I wanted to say, Rudy, about this little 380. There's a lot of 380s now on the market. It's kind of a, a popular caliber right now. It's a trendy caliber. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of 380s out there where you couldn't hit a paper plate at 10 yards, even with deliberate fire. This little car P380, and I have no connection with their company, but I like their guns because they're well made. I can consistently shoot a man-sized target at 100 yards with, that with, 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 with a little car. So that's very confidence inspiring. If I'm gonna carry a gun 24-7, yeah. and you know it's my last ditch weapon to protect my wife and my four little kids, I'm not going to get the $200 variety. I'm going to get the $800 variety yeah. and go out and shoot 500, 1,000 rounds through it in various scenarios and make sure I'm absolutely confident in that little gun. I think yeah. that's where a lot of people are a little misunderstood about yeah. what's required with a smaller yeah. firearm. Yeah, what, they, what I also want a little bit emphasize is uh, some people are looking out, you know, I want the best of the best, so they buy a $3,000 1911. Or well, here in this case, uh, this gun uh, uh, right around is almost $7,000. Uh, but what is the problem? 
I spent seven thousand dollars on this gun, and now I have no money for ammunition. <laughs> yeah. So you are much better off. You buy a five hundred dollar, five hundred dollar Glock, yes. and for the rest of uh, five thousand or six thousand five hundred dollar, I buy ammunition, go and shoot. A and get proper instruction. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Training, this is the most important. You cannot expect uh, like some, I mean, I have sometimes students up there and I see this very often. I don't want to pick now on women, uh, but the husband buy them a gun, uh, put the gun besides the bed, put this in, uh, rounds extra, magazine extra, no loaded gun. And then the woman uh, coming out and say, okay, load the magazine. How do I do this? How do you don't know how to load it the It doesn't magazine? work. Yeah. It absolutely doesn't work. In, in fact, we could be so bold to say, Rudy, that these these here are, are guns, but ultimately through training, we become the weapon. Through, absolutely. Through the awareness yes. yeah. and through our preparation yeah. and through kind of our combat mindset. Absolutely. Because yeah. we are the thinking part. That's right. This is only the executing part. Yeah. And this is a big issue in this gun. This is just a tool. Yeah. Yeah. So we have one more genre of firearms here on the table. We've got this uh, Smith & Wesson 617, yeah. and we've got the Smith & Wesson M&P 22, uh, two uh, firearms that I found to be extremely uh, cost-effective and accurate and reliable. Yeah. Well, these are both in a 22 long rifle cartridge. Yeah. What could, where, how could the, uh, the, the uh, firearms aficionado incorporate that into his training program? At his first in the training program, what they can include this is, you can shoot a ton, a ton of rounds of this. And it doesn't get so much in your in your uh, pocket, you know, in your money. In your doesn't pocket. cost too much. Yeah, it's very very cheap actually. Uh, the next is the guns. Now they are built so good that this almost I mean this works like the original part. Now I can go actually almost every day out there and fire hundred rounds, mm -hmm. and I don't pay a lot of money for this. But it'll it feel is, just like this is the same system what you have yep. on the thing, the same grip. Almost the same weight. I mean, this is almost the same. And the same yeah. operating controls. Yeah, yeah. So you're developing muscle yeah. memory. You know exactly where the magazine release is, where the slide stop release is. Yeah. If there's a safety on the gun, you know where that is. Absolutely. And so you get that great uh, training. What could be the downside to just shooting 22 long rifle all the time? Yeah, the biggest problem is uh, I saw people already, they practice only 22s. And then all of a sudden, they, they practice a 22 revolver. All of a sudden, they come out there and shoot the first time uh, a 38 plus P or 357 Magnum. They say, what the heck is going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, because the kick is much more. Mm -hmm. The muzzle blast is the much more. The muzzle blast is much more. Get a little disoriented from yes, that muzzle blast. Yes, yes, And this is a big mm -hmm. issue. So you want to incorporate this in your training with, with, uh, when you ever have the possibility to train with 22. Uh, train maybe 10, 15 percent with 22. 10 or 15 the rest. Uh, with your full size or with your full size rounds. Mm -hmm. And here again, it is not important the quantity what you train uh, or, or shoot on the range. It is important the quality of the training. Sure. Very often you go out there and you take only 75 rounds with you. And you make a very good training. You get maybe sometimes more out with the short, uh, with, with, with the small amount of, of ammunition than when you're out there and you shoot every day 500 rounds. What I do for myself and for my students, I write programs. There's a four or five different programs. So this is always a 100 round training test. Yeah. And before you go on the range and mix it up, take this one sheet with you and go on the range and then you work the 100 rounds down there. You know, on one time is emphasis on multiple targets, on one day's emphasis, you know, on one fast uh, designated or double tap uh, the headshots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they emphasize this on, on this. And so people are really, they sent me a lot of emails and they write in programs on my computer and send this home because very often it is very common. Uh, you pack everything together at home, you go on the range, you put your target on. Hmm. What shall I do now? Yeah, you want to have a plan. Yes, Before sir. I go on a range and you train, have a plan. What, what what do I want to do today? Today, my emphasis is good grip, good presentation. They do this over and over again. And here again, what uh, people have to also understand is a, a lot of dry practice doesn't make you a better shooter. You need a lot of trigger time to become a better shooter. A dry practice helps you at home to master a new task what you have. When you go on the range, 
you want to include this new technique what you have in your training. Okay, let's just verify, uh, clarify that for the yeah. viewers. When you say drive practice, you're talking about manipulating the farm without any live ammunition. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yes, there's no ammunition, nothing at home. Remember, when I ever do try practice at home, I want to right away hit this again. There's no ammunition in the gun, no ammunition in the magazine, not even ammunition in the same room where you try practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when you do this, lock your doors, turn off your phones, turn off the music, concentrate 100% on the task what you have. You can achieve a lot of uh, achievement yeah, at home with try practice, but nothing goes away. As soon as you're on the range and you have the first time up and bang, all of a sudden it's different again. You need a lot of live fire training or mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. yeah, on the range to become a better shooter. A dry practice helps you to yes, become sir. a better shooter, yes. yeah. but live fire makes you a better shooter. Yeah. Now we've covered all that, we kind of come to one of the, uh, the fun hypothetical questions that firearms owners love to talk about. Uh, the question is, if you could only have one handgun, Rudy, which would it be? And I'll, and I'll share with you what my choice would be. Yeah. And first of all, for the smarty pants out there, Rudy was talking as if this was a Glock 9mm, but it is in fact a Glock Model 20 10mm, which is my primary carry firearm. And this is my backup, which is a Glock Model 29, also in 10mm. They take the same magazines. So, Rudy, if I could only have one firearm, yeah. handgun, and God bless America, I'll never, hopefully never be in that situation, but my choice right here would be the uh, the Glock model uh, 29 in 10 millimeter because of a lot of the things we talked about. It, it's not super compact. Yeah. It's kind of mid-size. Yeah. It is the compact 10 millimeter. It's got a good hard-hitting round, which which I wouldn't recommend to most people because it requires a whole lot more practice to master yes. than it does a nine millimeter or a 40 Smith and Wesson. Uh, but I'm willing to put that time in. And then it does have a 10 round magazine capacity yeah. with a spare of 15 rounds on my hip. Yeah. I feel I would feel pretty good to go with this one. What would be your choice, Rudy? My choice, I have only one three letters, G17. G17. Glock 17, this is my most favorite gun. It's very good in a defensive situation. I can go out, I can shoot competition if I want. I have a very high round count magazine capacity in there. Yeah, how many rounds? That holds 17, 17 plus, plus one, one in the chamber, it's 18 Total rounds. 18 rounds. And then you put maybe a little short sleeve on and you have plus six, so I have 24 rounds in this clock. Uh, the gun is actually pretty light. It's very simple to operate. And I can really carry this uh, inside the waistband and there's not a problem. Here on this gun, the problem is a little bit, it has a large frame. The Glock 17 is a little bit tighter, mm -hmm. like this here. When I see this here, can I see this blue one? It's a little bit tighter here yeah. than this. This is a large frame. And this is a pretty much a small frame. This is actually an exact replica of, of the a Glock 17. 17 yeah. Yeah. This is my gun, what I would choose. Yes. Yeah. Nothing goes about Glock. And here again, why would I choose this? I was in many alter, uh, altercations and in fights with Glocks. Uh, and I had my Glock 17 on my side and it never ever had one malfunction or broke down on me. You're talking about you've been in actual gunfights that you survived? Yes, yes. Actually pretty much in many in my kind of work <laughs> what I had. But here again, uh, you have to understand gunfighting is also uh, very often I pistol whip a lot of guys in my uh, line of duty as diplomatic security. Pistol whipped. God, pistol whipped them, yes. yeah. And this is also, I mean, I, I, fight, I fought with my gun and this is very, very fast, very brutal and very fro uh, close down. Back off! Move! Uh, I was pretty much uh, in many battles. And here again, I mean, a battle can go from two seconds out to three days. Uh, we, we fought in Africa down there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna I mean, talk a bit about more of that when we yeah. get to our interview. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, Rudy, I just can't wait to get out on the range and get some expert instruction from you. I I love shooting handguns, but nothing's better than doing it under the watchful supervision of a true master. And Rudy is a true master.